Imagine that you're walking past a pond in a park. Let's say that you, you know this park well. You've walked past it many times before. But today, as you walk past, you see that there's a small child who's fallen into it. If you don't save the child, it's very likely that the child will drown. But then the thought occurs to you that just this morning, you put on your favorite pair of shoes. They're quite expensive shoes that you bought just recently for a lot of money. So you ask yourself, do I really have a responsibility to save this child? I don't know the child. Couldn't I just walk on and then not have to buy myself a new pair of shoes? Peter Singer is suggesting the unthinkable. No one would allow a child to drown in order to save a pair of shoes. Surely we all know exactly what we would do in that situation. I'm sure that you would save the child. And I'm sure that you would think that somebody who didn't save the child because they didn't want to ruin their shoes had something really seriously wrong with them. Someone who was just doing the wrong thing, not a good person. But now, I want you to think about a real situation that we're all in. All of us, that is, who are living quite comfortable, middle-class lives in a nation like Australia. There are, elsewhere in the world, children who are dying from preventable poverty-related causes. Can we really believe that we are living a good life, an ethically decent life, if we don't do anything serious to help reduce poverty around the world? and help save the lives of children or adults who are likely to die if we don't increase the amount of aid we're given. Are we morally any different from the person who walks past the pond because they don't want to ruin their shoes? This is the kind of question Peter Singer's been asking for over 30 years. He's probably best known for his association with the animal liberation movement when he took to the streets to protest his cause. Grain that we feed to animals that end up on our tables as turkeys and hams could have gone to feed the third world people. At 62, Peter's published his argument about our moral responsibility to the poor in a recent book, The Life You Can Save. It's based on one of his earliest published essays called Famine, Affluence and Morality, written when he was just 25. Peter Singer, you've been putting these arguments really since the early 70s. Do you feel there's a new urgency to them? I do. I think it's partly that we have the capacity now to do so much more than we could in the 1970s. We have the means, we have a better understanding of the situation, and we have become more affluent than we were in the 1970s. And the number of poor people in the world as a proportion of the world's population has shrunk. So the urgency really is to say, look, we, we can do something about it now. Whereas perhaps in the 70s, it, it all seemed too hard. And if we can do something about it, then it seems to follow that we ought to be doing something about it. So is it a sort of new philosophy for a time of plenty in a way? I think it's a, it's a new philosophy for an, for an age that has come to the point where really... It's a scandal that so much poverty and so much unnecessary death continues. Uh, that the world has so much wealth, so much capacity, that it's really time to put this into the past. There are some who might say to you, what's a philosopher doing talking like this? This is a political statement. This is a, a political manifesto about the distribution of wealth. Uh, no, I think it's very much what philosophers talk about. And you can go right back to the beginning of the Western philosophical tradition to... Plato's Republic, um, and you find discussions of justice and, and what do we owe to others. Um, that's a central part of, of philosophy, of, of ethics. What do I owe to strangers? What do I owe to my family? What is it to live a good life? Um, those are questions which we face as individuals. 
I'm, I'm not just saying the government ought to do this or the collective is responsible for that. I'm really posing questions about what should I do in my life? How should I live? And that's a core philosophical concern. And yet we have this real self-interest ethic, don't we? Paul Keating had a great line, in any two-horse race always back self-interest, at least you know it's trying. <laughs> And a lot of people might agree with him. Uh, we, there's quite a bit of research to show that we're a bit uh, uncomfortable with undeniable setting aside of self-interest. That's true, and I think it's one of the things that we ought to be trying to change. Uh, people are often uncomfortable with saying, I give money away, or you know, I do this because I want to help others. Uh, so they even try sometimes to disguise it and say, well, you know, this is good for business. I think we should try to be more open about that. I think we should challenge the norm of self-interest and we should say openly, I think it's important to be prepared to help others. Even if you don't know them. Even if you don't know them, even if they're strangers, that's right. So in other words, you're saying we have to con think about the comfort of strangers as much as those close to us. That's a, that's a really quite a profound recalibrating of an ethic, isn't it? Well, I'm not saying we have to be completely impartial between, say, our children and the children of strangers. But I do think that uh, we certainly have to bring the interests of strangers more to the centre of our attention, even if not on an equal footing with those of our own children or, or others who we love and who are close to us. Still, um, they shouldn't be pushed totally out of the picture, as they so often are now, by that focus on the immediate family and, and other, very, other people very close to us.